Welcome everyone to our Traveling Thursday destination webinar. Tonight we will be traveling to the Philippines with you. So we're honored to have you join us. Uh, many of you on the call have been on several of these webinars, so we really appreciate you coming in here. Just a few words um, prior to us really get, getting to go. There will be a Q&A at the end. can also give you a hint that there will be a prize at the end. So you need to be still staying on the presentation in order to be eligible to win. So Fly to Dive Adventures is a dive travel wholesaler. You will hear about the Philippines, where they're located, how to get there. And then we will dive right into Atlantis. The company has actually two permanent locations, two resorts, and then a liveaboard in various um, destinations. So we'll hear about Atlantis Resort in Porta Galera, Atlantis Resort Dumaguete, and then where the Atlantis Azores all operates. And like I said already at the end, we will have a Q&A a draw, and then we'll also talk about our next destination in two weeks. A few words about us, Flying Sea Dive Adventures. This is our team, uh, six of us here. I think most of us are on the call tonight as well. We are a dive travel company that will be celebrating the 25th anniversary next year. And dive travel is all that we do. We have a combined experience of over 70 years between the six of us. So there is not much that we haven't done in terms of dive travel. And like I normally say, usually we're not all together here in beautiful British Columbia because one of us is traveling somewhere in the world. But due to COVID, that's not happening right now. So we're all staying put at the moment. But we do represent over 40 destinations in the world, pretty much every major dive resort, liveaboard. Um, we have very close partnerships with a lot of them in many, many different destinations. We're IATA appointed, which also means that we can issue our own tickets and have control um, over the flights and the tickets that we book for you. We do group trips, and most of the group trips that we do are organized through dive shops, and then also individual trips, where you want to go, when you want to go, how long you want to go. And we're traveling to the Philippines, and I'm pleased to welcome Les, the manager, the sales manager for Atlantis Resorts here in North America. He will be introducing us to all the different areas. I'm remiss to say something still that I wanted to say. It's Earth Day today. And I think we all are ocean lovers and ocean conservatives. But um, it's more than about the ocean. It's really our entire world. The Earth is worth protecting and appreciating. And so the fact that you're here tonight is part of that. You're interested in it. And so you're sharing the beauty of our surroundings with us. And I'm just going to let you go for it. Well, good evening, everyone. And thanks for joining Fly and Sea Dive Adventures in Atlantis tonight to talk about the Philippines. You know, Atlantis is the premier dive operation in the Philippines, and the Philippines are half a world away from us in a wonderful place called the Coral Triangle. I've kind of outlined the Coral Triangle there. You see the Philippines are in the apex of the Coral Triangle, and it goes down to the eastern side of Malaysia and Borneo, into Indonesia, it hangs the right in Guinea, and all the way to the Solomon Islands. This is a very special part of the world. During the last ice age, uh, vast pools of ocean lakes uh, developed as the waters receded over 600 feet. And even though the fish that were indigenous to this area were all the same when this started, a millennium later, 2.5 million years later, they developed differently each, in each of these pools. And when the waters then rose again, this became the most biodiverse spot on the planet. With 75% of all the six, uh, uh, 600 corals, which constitute 75% of the reef building corals in the world, 3,000 fish species, which is 400 of the reef fish species, 40% of the reef fish species, 
six of seven turtle species and 75% of all mollusks in the world. And there's 85,000 mollusks. So this is the warm water mecca for scuba diving. Now the gateway to the Philippines is Manila. And when you have an opportunity to check it out and talk to Petra and her team, you'll find that there's a million different ways of getting to Manila. Some of the best are direct flights from Vancouver on Philippine Air, as well as San Francisco and Los Angeles. But pretty much no matter where you are in the world, you'll see a vast amount of airlines buying for your business, which also appeal to you because the price of airlines tickets are quite reasonable. What is Atlantis? Well, Atlantis is comprised of two resorts. First, there's Atlantis Porta Galera, which is located 90 miles south of Manila on the island of Oriental Mindoro. Atlantis Dumaguete, that's 400 miles south of Manila on the island of Oriental Negros. And then we have the liveaboard Azores, which has six different itineraries depending upon your interests and the time of year. So with the premier dive operation in the Philippines, we take you to the best of what the Philippines has to offer. And it all starts the moment your feet hit the ground. We're known for our service as well as our diving. And so as soon as you hit the ground, as coordinated with Petra and her team, we'll be there waiting for you, meeting and greeting you. And we can take you right to the resorts or to the boat, provided you get there, let's say, before noon. Okay, The sooner the better. Because we're all about diving and we want to get you to the dive operation as quickly as possible. We've been doing this now 27 years. So I like to say that I've, well, corrupted this professional dive presentation with my phone pictures. Actually, here's the phone. That's a bad picture. So I have a lot of my photos in here, not because I'm a great photographer, but because I don't want to give you a bunch of glamorous shots. This is what you're going to see when you, when you come here. So this is very, very realistic, if you will. Puerto Valera is located on Saban Beach. Saban Bay itself was voted UNESCO most beautiful bay in Asia in 2004. This sleepy little fishing village in the 70s became a UNESCO biosphere preserve and now is transformed into a scuba village. Okay. So there's restaurants and bars, shops and so forth. And, it, and to the right of our sign there, you get to kind of see a sidewalk, and that separates the main part of our resort, which goes up because everything on this bay goes up the side of a hill, and our annex building, which comprises our dive shop, the 50 bar, something unique. The next floor above that, there's six rooms for singles with no, sing no additional single supplement, and then our two premier CU suites. And like I said, uh, there's 40 rooms here. And everything goes up to the side of the hill. The, the honeymoon suite is at the highest point of the resort. Another, it shows the beach. I've never seen anyone lay out on this beach. This beach is traverse, which are traverse from the resort to your boat. We're all about to the resort. It's very picturesque. And as we go up, you get the first view of one of our dive boats. You, you can see it. It's, it's kind of like, we call it a coastal boat. It's a speedboat. And all we're going to do in that boat is we're going to put six divers max to one dive guide and a boatman. And we can use boats like that because if you want to see a, a pygmy seahorse, it's a one-minute boat ride. 90% of our dives here are going to be minutes or less to the dive site with all of our surface intervals back at the resort. That's pretty cool. And we'll talk more about that later. As we go up and through the resort, the Bougainvillea hanging from the terraces, beautiful views of the bay, and some night shot. Now, you know you're somebody really, really special when you first arrive because what's going to happen is the masseuses are going to come out and give you a neck and shoulder massage. And you immediately know these 90-pound girls are professionally trained in hand to steel and know exactly what they're doing. The servers come out in their sarongs and give you a glass of calamance. It's kind of like a climate, not alcoholic. Because we're going to go diving. We're all about the diving. Here's a deluxe room. You know, in this third world country, what we've done is we put together rooms that are appointed with things that, well, are going to make you feel right at home and very special. So we have a big screen TV. We have a mini bar. 
We have a ceiling fan that works. We have air conditioning that works. We have backup generation of power. And we've got pretty good Wi-Fi. No matter where I end up, it seems, in the resort. I never have to sit in the restaurant to, eat, to do my work. I get work from the room my boss puts me in. So there's there's a deluxe room with a queen bed. And here's one with a queen and single. And we also we have some upgrade terrace rooms. One's called the Seaview Terrace with two double beds. And the coconut terrace, and the terraces are huge, actually. A couple chase lounges, a chair, uh, tables with chairs, a bar, very, very nice. On the fourth level, we have our executive suites with king beds, a very big dining area, seat area, and so forth. And the honeymoon suite on the fifth level with gorgeous views. The Premier Sea View Suites, we have two rooms there, and they're right on the water. So once again, Port Glare has approximately 40 rooms, a beautiful pool. A store for sundry, sundry items, some souvenirs, some scuba stuff. And here's where we tend to gather at the end of a hard uh, day of scuba diving after a wonderful meal at the bar right on the water. So let's talk about food, one of my favorite topics. Now, even before you come, you're going to get a sense of how well I'll be taking care of you. Because you're going to be pre-registering at Guest Corner on our website, letting us know that, well, you're gluten intolerant, you lactose intolerant, you, you can't have salt, whatever it is. But even more than that, we want to know it's your anniversary, your birthday, it's going to be your 100th dive, your millionth dive, whatever it might be, because we want to celebrate those things with you. But we'll also take that information about any type of food allergy you have, and you'll find that the chefs then will come out and greet you and talk a little bit about the menu and make sure that they accommodate whatever need you might have and happen to have. I don't think I mentioned it yet, but we're going to go diving five times a day. It's available to you if you want. There's going to be two morning dives, two afternoon dives, and a night dive. Now, some people say, wow, five dives a day. There's iron guy, iron divers that will do that. But some people say they'll not, they're not going to do that. But that's okay because we base our pricing on three. Our schedule doesn't combine with the way we feed you, we give you vacation freedom that you normally don't have on a diet trip. So what I mean by that is breakfast starts with a big pot of coffee available at 6 o'clock in the morning and the actual serving, which is plated food made to order, 6.30 to 10 a.m. Lunch is going to be 11 to 2. Dinner is going to be 6.30 to 10 p.m. So should you decide to miss the 8.30 dive because you like to sleep in in the morning, get up at 9 and then have a nice leisurely breakfast and get on the 10, 15 boat, you can do that because you don't have to get up at 6.30 in the morning to make sure that you're having breakfast at 7. We serve breakfast from 6.30 to 10, made to order, plated food. The food is all prepared by chefs that have graduated from culinary arts school. Uh, if you took a peek inside our uh, restaurant's uh, kitchens, you'll see nothing but stainless steel, proper food in preparation. And, and food handling techniques, and the food is to die for. So breakfast is going to start with a, a freshly squeezed juice, a fresh fruit plate, and whatever it is you order off the menu. Uh, lunches and dinners are order off the blackboard, which I rotated every two weeks. So you can spend two weeks with us and never have the same lunches and dinners, and that's true for the boat as well. You'll have two starters. One will be a soup, one will be a salad. Today it's watermelon and bell pepper to spacho soup or chicken Caesar salad. There will be four mains, a mix of proteins, like today it's fish, chicken, and beef. So it's fish filet with ginger crusted, coconut and cubed spinach and brown rice, almond and vanilla chicken, ice cream, vegetables and egg noodles, or beef teriyaki, sesame, wonton, honey, honey glazed vegetables and steamed rice. And the fourth dish will always be vegetarian, which we can make vegan. Today it's pumpkin risotto with a wonderful chocolate romance dessert. And take my word for it, I love that dessert. So the food is fabulous. The bad news is even if you dive five dives a day, don't expect to lose much weight because you will want to eat every bite. Everything that you eat from our kitchen is made from scratch. And here's our kitchen in a restaurant area. It's called Toko's. There's also a Mongolian walk, and you can't really see it in the picture. It's is kind of in front of those blackboards where you pick various types of proteins and vegetables and sauces, and we do a stir, stir fry for you. And some of our dishes. So some tuna steaks, some tenderloin, some shrimp, and a beautiful dessert. Now, the diving. Okay, We're predominantly going to be using, of course, aluminum tanks, and they're going to be 80 cubic foot tanks. 
We use membrane systems on all of our venues to generate a 32% uh, consistent blend of nitrox. We have 100 cubic foot tanks as well as 66s also available. Here's our dive uh, locker. Uh, you'll be assigned an area, I call it a cubby hole. Those are those little numbered areas, those shelved kind of areas also to put your wetsuit and so forth. But you're going to find that when you're with us, you're not going to get any stairs or around here or there, and you're not going to be messing with your dive gear much because all we ask you to do is assemble your dive gear one time before the first dive. After that, all we ask you to do is analyze takes. You'll always find, even that first tank you assemble, your equipment waiting for you on the boat. So with us, you're never going to lift a tank. You're never going to go up a ladder onto the boat with a tank on your back. It is true, true valley service. Of course, if you'd like to do those things, you want to assemble your uh, kit, come 10 minutes early to the briefing. If you want to go up the ladder uh, at the end of the dive with your tank on your back, that's fine too. So uh, we're going to do five dives a day, approximately at 8.30, 10.15, 2, 4, a night dive every night at 6. We offer Mandarin fish dives at both of our resorts. They go out at 5. Uh, and uh, we also order, offer black uh, water dives, and we also offer coral night dives. Before every dive, you're going to get a detailed briefing. As you can see, you're in the center of all the diving with the green arrow is where we're located. Uh, long boat rides might be all the way to the left, uh, number 25, if you can kind of see that, is uh, huge, uh, giant clams. It's probably about a 12 to 15 minute boat ride. And of course, finally to the right, oh gosh, uh, it's hard to see the numbers, maybe 21 or 24 there. I call those that area there new to Brank City. If any is, it's hard to count. In the area of 75 to 100 new Brinks on a single dive there. It's pretty fantastic. You see, where you're diving right now is a very, very special place. We're diving a place called the Verde Island Passage. I encourage you to look it up. Remember I said the Philippines are on the pinnacle of the very, very apex of the Coral Triangle. There's a convergence of currents here, the three different currents, that make Verde Island the most marine biodiverse spot on the planet. You can look it up. As we all know, Mr. Google never lies. Okay. And here we are with our five dives per day. Speech, your kit's waiting for you on the boat. You'll go to Monkey Beach. I would say 90% of the time that dive site is going to be yours. Maximum divers mean six divers. And boatman, of course, is on the boat watching. Most of your dives here are going to be drift dives. Maximum depth is at a uh, hundred feet. Maximum time is an hour. I would say that dives require open water skills. Uh, very easy diving. We're going to go down as a group, and we're going to come up as a group. If you're a little low on air, just signal the dive guy, let him know. We'll take you a little shallower, and that's fine with me because in 20 to 25 feet of water, I'm seeing wonderful sunlight, beautiful corals. I often hear, wow, I didn't know it would be so colorful. And, man, these are the healthiest corals I've ever seen. They grow, grow quickly, and they go right up the beach. Uh, after you come back to the boat, after you're safe to stop, you'll take your uh, kit off in the water. Hand it to the dive guide next to you. We'll hand it up to the boatman, and you'll walk up the ladder with no man in your back. So, how about a video? Uh, this one is from uh, Howard Hall.
one of the wonderful things you're going to be able to do when you visit us at Atlantis Porta Galera is do a day trip to Verde Island. Now, whereas the scientists will say that Verde Island Passage is the center of bio, marine biodiversity in the world, of Verde Island, they say, is the center of the center of the world's marine biodiversity. In fact, in 2015, Terry Gosselin of the California Academy of Sciences, who we uh, studied Verde Island for six weeks. During that period, they swam with a sperm whale, a whale shark, and discovered 200 new species on both open and closed circuit. The diving at Verde Island is over the top fantastic. Here's some of our shots. Beautiful hard corals, soft corals, millions of anthias, enveloped with thousands of red tooth trigger fish, uh, different types of shrimp, nudibranchs. I've seen crocodile fish, various species of frogfish. I happen to swim by, and there's lots swimming by. Beautiful picture there. What we do is we go about 50 minutes in a banca, and you can see one there. Uh, the Central Asian boat, wonderful diving platforms and drop a chef with food off on in a dive camp. We dive one side of this underwater pinnacle, and then we'll go have treats from our restaurant and enjoy beautiful views. And then we'll dive the other side of the pinnacle and come back and have a fabulous lunch. It'll be a barbecue lunch, all kinds of different proteins, various types of salads. You'd swear you're still in the resort, but it's, it's really done well. There's our boat. Wonderful platform. Getting back on that boat could be easier. You can kind of see very, very kind of tough, though, on either side of the front there. There's actually steps like you have in your house. And once again, you walk up those steps with nothing on your back. Very easy. Our experienced dive team, we've got dive guys that have been with us 18, 20 years. And we have dedicated camera rooms at both of our facilities. We have two rent rooms like this in uh, Puerto Galera. Uh, that's because we have certainly a lot of things to take photos of. You'll find yourself taking thousands of photos. And we have a lot of professional photographers, including people like Marty Snyderman, who is our photo ambassador, and a group of the top professionals in the world, both videographers and photographers, known as the Atlantis Image Makers. I alluded to uh, Howard and Michelle, uh, among others, earlier in our talk. Uh, air guns all the way around, 110 outlets, uh, it's a wonderful facility for uh, cameras. A beautiful spa, an hour and a half massage of either one of our resorts is a whole $40. A two-hour hot stone massage is 50 bucks. Uh, very professional. Uh, they're professionally trained. Uh, and there's a full suite of different spa packages that you can enjoy. In Puerto Galera, there's other things to do. Uh, one of the really cool things, I think, is to go to Hidden Paradise, which is going up to see a tribe that is settled on this. It was a nomadic tribe that is now settled into the jungle. Uh, the very last part of your visit to that tribe is actually uh, on an ox-drawn cart going through water and uh, various streams and stuff, and you have lunch there and come back. So it's kind of different and very cool. So uh, that is an introduction to Atlantis Porta Galera. Now, Atlantis Porta Galera, as I stated, is 90 miles south of Manila. We meet and greet you at the resort, or we can make arrangements for your hotel in Manila. And then we escort you in an air-conditioned van either to a private boat or to a ferry, and then take, that takes you to the port where we pick you up, and there's about a 10- to 15-minute ride to the resort. The entire process round, uh, from Manila is handled by us, and it usually takes about three and a half on to our next resort. So a lot of people do go to both resorts. They might spend a week at each resort, for example. So we would get you back to Manila, and your next spot would be Atlantis Dumaguete, which is 400 miles south of Manila. Once again, escorting you to the airport, we often take Cebu Pacific, although there's other options, and I need to help you with that as well. Uh, but we'd be flying, uh, no matter the option, a full-size jet. And it takes about 62 to 64 minutes to go to a beautiful tropical paradise in Atlantis Dumaguete. It's about a 30-minute van ride. Uh, from the airport, where you're greeted in the same manner as you would have been greeted in Puerto Galera. Another video to show you, Atlanta Stumagetti.
rooms here in total throughout the property, and it's just a great place to be. In the same manner as those that we talked about in Puerto Galera, the ocean front, I think they're really good for cups with kings. They could be converted to two singles. Use of the garden, double bowl sink, and a beautiful shower. We have four garden suites with two queen beds. These are huge rooms. We have one two bedroom with a king that converted, it can be two doubles, and then in the adjoining room is a queen. They share a bathroom and a seating area right next to our spot with the same professional spa treatments you'd find in Puerto Galera. Same type of store as well, and just a wonderful environment to be in. The island in the background is known as Apo Island, and we'll talk more about that. Same type of food. And even if you have something simple, it'll be wonderful. And that's our liveaboard, the Azores, the background. We're smart enough to know that if you needed 10 pounds in Puerto Galera in your cubby hole, as I call it, there'll be 10 pounds waiting for you here in Jimmy Getty. A huge room, our locker. Experienced dive guides once again. And uh, always a reminder that we do marine park uh, or marine life presentations at both of our resorts. Once again, before every dive, and very much the same here, it's going to be four day dives and one night dive at six. Um, Matter of fish dive is available. Uh, detail briefings, short boat rides. You can add dawn dives, full all night dives, and blackwater dive. Typical dive here. I call it a combo dive. Oftentimes, we seem to be moored over sand in 10 to 20 feet of water. And your first part of the dive will be over sand. You'll see all kinds of crazy things. And then you'll hit coral, beautiful coral. And you'll see even more kinds of crazy things and some beautiful things like this. Then you'll return to the boat over sand. So whereas Puerto Galera is mostly drift diving, I would say Dumaguete is mostly bo boat. Uh, they're going back to the boat. You also get to go on a day trip to Apo Island or Sikior. And this is a fantastic dive location. In fact, I took that picture when the California Academy of Sciences and Terry Goslin was with me and two other scientists. And they decided they would come back. And in 2017, they studied Apo Island and cataloged 440 pristine corals in this one location. It is over the top fantastic. Well, all, like all of our day trips, we'll be doing three tanks. We have a wonderful barbecue lunch and plenty of treats. Um, also no, known as Turtle Heaven, I have a friend that took a shot, and in one frame he has six turtles. And you'll mostly be seeing very large green sea turtles and hawksbills. It's very difficult to get one species of as you can see. Another wonderful day trip is to go snorkel with the whale sharks at Aslan. You get up very early in the morning. We'll have a wonderful breakfast for you. You and your dive guides will take a ride in the van and then a ferry and then go to the island of Cebu where you'll be within an arm's length of whale sharks who are feeding on brine shrimp that has been put, placed in the water and is floating in the water. So the best way to do this is indeed snorkeling. You have a constant interaction uh, up close and personal with whale sharks for approximately 40 minutes. It's a very unique experience. And there's plenty of other things to do in Dumaguete as well for the non-diver or someone who wants to take a break. Some of the things you'll be seeing are like skeleton shrimp. Lots of thorny seahorses, cotton seahorses, as well as pygmies, mandarin fish, various species of octopus, including mimic, wonderpus, ocelot, coconut, and of course, blue ring, various species of ghost, ghost pipefish, Giant, giant frogfish, hairy frogfish, clown frogfish. The biodiversity of the Philippines is truly mind blowing. 180 species of nudibranchs. So now we've visited both of our resorts. Atlantis has two, Puerto Galera and Dumaguete. Now we're going to talk about the boat. Uh, the Azores was built in the United States in 1989. It houses 16 guests. We have eight rooms, seven of which are deluxe, and one is the owner's suite, which is a, is a premium priced uh, suite right behind the bridge, a bigger room and so forth. 
uh, we take extremely good care of this boat. Uh, so in other words, uh, it's in dry dock one year, wet dock the next year. Uh, when we use, when we work with the boat, uh, it's very important for us to have a safe boat. So fundamentally, very important thing, we have two engines. We have two air compressors. We have two water making systems. Your water is unlimited hot shower. Basically, we have doubled up on everything. We have excess uh, power generation capability. We go through our fire extinguishers, our fire detection system, our carbon monoxide testing systems, our fire extinguishers. We actually have a hail and fire suppression system in the boat. That means we could shut a door, fill the room with CO2, and put a fire out. We have very diligent crews that would never skip a 24-hour watch uh, and a very interactive orientation that points out secondary exits that you actually manipulate as part of the exercise. No one's allowed to charge anything in their rooms. We have a common charging area. All rooms are inspected every day. Uh, of course, when we make the bed and stuff, uh, do our housekeeping. So anything that is found being charged is then moved to the common charging area, which is in a safe outdoor area, but yet protected from the elements. So more about the boat. Uh, about two years ago, we stripped the entire interior of the boat, putting on new carpet, new bedding, new countertops, uh, cabinets, and so forth. It was at one time uh, uh, the truck aggressor years and years ago. Here's what a, a typical aggressor boat would look like, a double bed in a bunk formation. We have several rooms like that. And, of course, the owner suite. We're diving off of Zodiacs, but we built a special ladder that helps you get into the boat. And then, of course, when you dive with us, you're never having to walk up that ladder with anything on your back. Now, we have six itineraries. And it all starts in January and February. We do Apo Reef in the wrecks of Corona. Then we go on to Tubata, out of Puerto Princesas in the island of Palawan. We do that March through June, a transition trip moving the boat through Tubata to, to Dumaguete, where then it is based from July through December when we do either Bohol or the Malapaspa Cebu itineraries. Then right after Christmas, Dumaguete to Puerto Galera, and it all begins again. So those are our six itineraries. We'll start with Apple Reef and the wrecks of Corone. That's where the arrow is, kind of in the north, western, central part of, of the Philippines. So we do this in January and February. Apple Reef is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the second largest reef system in the country of the Philippines. We'll see large pelagics like sharks, very good chances for manta rays, wonderful for pristine coral. And then <laughs> maybe some manta rays. And then we'll motor on to the wrecks of Corone. In September of 20, September 24th, 1944, this picture was taken. Uh, these, there was actually 12 Japanese ships that had been bombed the previous day in Manila Harbor. And they sought safety here about an 18 hour cruise away. Uh, this picture was taken. All 12 ships were sunk by the United States Task Force, Task Force 38, with over 100 planes in the attack. Uh, nine of those ships rest within recreational dive limits. And of course, at this time, they're covered with beautiful, beautiful corals and lots of life. I walked into a dive shop in Toronto and a person there told me that there was so much life on these wrecks that it was typical for him to have to kind of push a school of cuttlefish out of the way for him to get the, 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 the picture of the wreck that he wanted to capture. And I've heard that consistently, that the life on these wrecks is spectacular. Also, this happens to be the site of the most renowned wreck in the Philippines called Araco, which is a 482-foot-long uh, refrigeration ship. Some of the ships still have iron limits on them. Uh, you'll have a sh short crew to lake. A friend of mine told me it was walking like a scene, walking through a scene in Jurassic Park with all the limestone formations in the jungle that you walk through. And good news is you don't have to carry any of your equipment. And you also have a very good chance to dive with dugongs. So we're doing Apple Reef and Corone in January and February. Then we motor the boat from Puerto Galera, approximately 650 nautical miles to the island of Palawan in the town of Puerto Potessa. Now we're going to do something very, very special. It's only dived for three and a half months out of the year in the northern Sulu Sea, known as Tubataha. 
Jibata is made up of three atolls. We're surrounded by waters that are from 3,000 to 6,000 feet deep. This is an area renowned for pristine corals and large pelagians. That's a picture I took in uh, Jesse Beasley Reef, our last stop. That would rival anything I've ever seen in Fiji in terms of beautiful soft corals, for example. Like I said, there's only about 15 boats that do this only about three and a half months out of the year. It's a very limited number of divers you get to get to do Tibata. Probably, arguably, some of the best warm water diving in the world. Look at, uh, in Tubata, we've got 600 species of fish, 360 species of coral, 11 shark species, and 13 species of dolphins and whales. We saw, on our trip, I remember, five manta rays. I probably saw in 22-day dives approximately 450 sharks and just gorgeous corals. All type of uh, large, large schools of fish. Tubata is a very, very special place. And we're diving that from March through June. And then we do a transition trip approximately the fourth week of June, moving the boat uh, over to Bataha, doing about 14 to 16 dives. One day of book reading slash beer drinking and no diving as we motor the boat toward the New Guinea. Uh, but it, it's a discounted trip. It's a wonderful uh, trip. We do some other spots in the Visayas area, central area of uh, the Philippines, and then bring the boat to the Guinea, where then we're going to be doing Doing Bohol and Cebu Malapas approximately July 1st, so about Christmas time. Uh, Bohol Safari as well as Cebu Malapas well, usually starts with Pescador, sheer walls, beautiful soft corals. A cathedral, you enter into the from the bottom and you pop out holes in the top and then back on those sheer walls with those beautiful soft corals. A hard coral garden in the back of it. Then we motored a mobile where there's a perpetual sardine run. I do not understand the bio, so I'm a believer. It happens every day, and it's just wonderful to dive with millions and millions of sardines. And then we go to Oslab, where from Dumaguete we snorkel with the whale sharks. Well, we're doing the boat and doing the hull. We're going to be diving with the whale sharks. On to Balikasag, a gorgeous hard coral garden. I often see uh, large schools of jacks there. And then everything I've talked about, uh, Corona in January and February, Tibata, March through June, uh, now Bohol, uh, from end, uh, the beginning of July through December. Those are all seven night trips, but we can add two to nine nights on the Bohol trip and take you all the way up to Cebu Malapasqua, well, along Cebu and up to Malapasqua. Malapasqua is renowned for your ability to dive with thresher sharks. And that's done two mornings. We drop you into 90 feet of water at 6.15 in the morning. Uh, it's a cleaning station for threshers, and you have a 90% chance of diving with thresher sharks. We also go to Gato Island, known as Snake. And I didn't list it here, but also a place called Kalikiman Island, which has got gorgeous, gorgeous hardcore gardens. Oh, we finished this trip with diving at Apo. And so uh, with the Premier Dive Operation in the Philippines, we have six fab itineraries for our live aboard and two great resorts located where the notable diving is. So with one operator, the premier dive operation of the Philippines, we offer you all the best diving you could possibly enjoy in this country. Uh, we're a very, very safe operation. We take a great pride in our service. And I think that you're going to find the Philippines are warm, loving people, and you'll really enjoy your time at, at Atlantis. Uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. Thank you for that. I appreciate you intriguing us about the Philippines, and there's a lot of material in there. We will now start with some Q&A, and I know Irene's going to um, take it from here. She's been monitoring the chat, and there have been a number of questions in there. And so just keep putting your questions into the chat, and we'll try to get to as many as possible. So, Les, can you tell us what the water temperatures are? Uh, that's going to be dependent upon the location and time of year. Uh, the coldest water temperatures I've ever encountered in my life, so I've been to the Philippines a dozen times, was Puerto Galera probably the end of the first week. It was probably 77 degrees. I've heard it could be as low as 74, but usually that's an upwelling and that's a, a short uh, phase thing. Uh, even then, 
I could fly down to Dumaguete and I would have 79, 80 degrees. So what I was, the message to everyone is cold water there is not very cold. <laughs> and so, uh, usually, um, I would say, uh, by April, you're looking at 82 degree water temperatures at both resorts. Uh, it probably gets a little warmer than that in the summertime. I've had 82 degree water temperatures in October, November, December. No, the thing about the Philippines is this. The entire archipelago of more than 7,000 islands is within 15 degrees of the equator. Nothing changes much. The air temperature doesn't change much. The water temperature doesn't change much. It's really beautiful all year round. Uh, Helen is asking, do we need to bring our own analyzer? I uh, know we have analyzers there. Kristen asked, you had a dive map up. It was towards the beginning of the presentation, and there was some yellow spots and red spots. Was there any differences between those? Like, why are some yellow? Why were some red? The yellow spots are wrecks. Uh, that was for Puerto Galera. There's only one notable wreck there, however. That's the wreck of the Alma Jane, which is a freighter. It's probably 170 feet or 190 feet long in that area. It's not huge. Uh, the other ones are small boats. So yellow is wrecks and red are just normal uh, dive sites. Okay. Uh, Bridget is asking, what about the new health protocols? You you didn't really mention that yet. Okay. Uh, there, honestly, there are, we, we have our own established protocols from whatever the Philippine government tells us to do uh, that, of course, we follow. Right now, the country is not open for tourism. And I'm sure those things are going to be evolving as, as all the rules, rules and regulations are always evolving. But I can guarantee you this. We are a quality operation. And we'll do whatever it takes to make sure everyone's going to be safe at Atlanta. So we'll go, we will always go above and beyond. Questions about uh, whale sharks and Oslo. Uh, the first one, are they only there at certain times of the year? And, and if certain times, what is that season? Uh, there, it's, it's a feed. Uh, brine shrimp is thrown in the water from about 6.30 in the morning to about 11 o'clock in the morning. And those whale sharks are there every day. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible to count. Uh, I counted 18 feeder boats. That's a little little tiny dugout canoe with a, an individual throwing brine shrimp in the water. Usually each one of those feeder boats will have one or two whale sharks on them. So you could extrapolate, extrapolate how many whale sharks there are and, and so on. But it happens every day. I've never been disappointed. And Marie Jose is asking, where did the brine shrimp come from? I do not know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm they buy. Assuming brush. local, probably. <laughs> I would think. I would think it would be local. These actually, this area. The story goes like this: They were local fishermen. They were subsistence living fish, you know, and they were catching shrimp. And the whale sharks were sucking on the nets. And they, you know, one time they probably would have killed them because they felt that they were competing with their ability to feed their families. But these people were enlightened and realized. That now the area has jobs, they have tourist uh, attraction. And one of the wonderful things is they've tagged over 1,000 whale sharks there now. It's, there's a marine biologist that's always present. Any presentations to everyone there about the value of these whale sharks and how people should not be eating, for example, whale shark fin soup. So I think overall, a very good thing. It's a unique opportunity to be really within arm's distance of a whale shark without having to kick your butt off. They're in the water vertical, sucking down the shrimp, and you're like, right. You're not allowed to touch the whale sharks, but I'm here. I've, I've been touched by them. Um, Frankie is asking, how close is Malapasqua from there? As the crow flies from Dumaguete, it's a, and the best way, I've been told, the best way to see the threshers is off of a liveaboard. Because you're you're parked right there. You get up in the morning and you're right there. You don't have to get up at four thirty in the morning to get a boat to go out. You're right on top of them, so it makes it really nice. Ed is asking, um, din tank valves. Uh, yes, we use uh, a hybrid valve that can accommodate a din or the regular uh, type of valve. Yeah. And so Karen, you, you just, it's a universal valve we use. Uh, Karen is asking, how experienced do I need to be? 
I would say Tubitaz got some pretty good currents. You probably need to have experience in currents and perhaps maybe an advanced certification. Dumaguete is very, very easy diving. I would say Porto Galera is very easy diving because the guides are smart enough to keep you out of the rough currents. You know what I mean? So I would say water for the resorts. I'd say the most challenging diving in the Philippines might be Tubata. Jack is asking, is the liverboard the only boat that dives Coron Bay and the wrecks? I'm sure there's other dive operations on Coron and other liverboards. I'm not familiar with those operations, though. That's the only way we get there. Okay. Uh, George is saying, our Philippine friends told us that right now only Philippine citizens can come. What's the truth? That's true. <laughs> uh, right now, the repatriating citizens, uh, they still have a quarantine. So when they arrive, I believe they're tested in quarantine for a period of time. Uh, the, the, the Philippines are not open for tourism. Uh, once we get word from the government that we can are going to be allowed to be open, it would take us probably four days to get ready, you know, bringing in food and bringing back our staff. Uh, saying that, uh, we're still supporting our staff. We support 130 Filipino families. So that's a lot of people. Uh, and uh, we're doing projects. We're doing training. We're doing security. Uh, we're, we're, we're providing gifts to s help sustain them. And uh, we're very strong. Uh, we're a well-capitalized company. We are the premier dive operation in the Philippines. And we will be here standing when this is open. Are there penetration dives on the ground? Uh, yes, there are. Uh, the, the, all the wrecks in Corona have been salvaged, so there's no engines. It makes it a little bit easier to penetrate. You don't see as much, but yeah, they're, they're very easy to penetrate. I've had consistent comments from people that the life on the wrecks is spectacular. So uh, it seems like something for everybody. So the, the, the wreck divers get to penetrate and enjoy that aspect of it. And the people who like fish and corals have a lot of life to look at as well. Do the resorts or the liveaboard you talked about support rebreathers, i.e. SORB and O2? Yes. Uh, we can get you anything you need for that, uh, but you'd be following the recreational dive plan. So the maximum depth and times would apply to you an hour and 100 feet. Okay. And that could change. So for, I mean, I can give you another example. So, for example, if somebody took – entire charter of the boat and they wanted to and this happens to me on the east coast of the united states for example because we've got a lot of gonzo and wreck divers in the northeast part of the country they might say i don't want to go see a reef i'll skip up a reef and i want to do pen two penetration or two, excuse me two saturation dives on a single wreck on one day can i do that and my answer is you you own the boat we'll do exactly what you want us to do uh, in that case our guides wave at 140 and an experienced Technical diver leads the group any further than that. The whale shark feeding only in the mornings? Yes. And then what's really cool about this, too, it's not like uh, oh, some of the shark dives I've, I've done in other parts of the world where even people rattle and the sharks show up because they've heard a rattle. Uh, what the marine biologists tell me is that there's no way that these sharks are getting enough to eat from the brine shrimp. So they have at, at around 11, they run out of brine shrimp. And they have to go hunt. And another thing is, you will see pretty big fish, but you will not see anything bigger than 30 feet. Once again, the marine biologists say this. At around 30 feet, they instinctively start a trip that takes them to Asia and all the way back to the Philippines. It's thousands of miles. So you will not see a 60-footer, but if you're right up next to a 30-footer, they'll look pretty big. So I think that's pretty cool. It doesn't affect their natural behavior. Julia is asking, can you get smaller tanks for small divers? Yes, we have 66s as well. Okay. And I'm jealous of the way Julia breathes. Lisa is asking, what is the approximate cost per week at each of the resorts for two divers all inclusive? I would say that it's very comparable to uh, going to an, a nice place in the Caribbean. And Irene and, and, uh, and Petra, you guys can talk about that, you know, the details of that with the customer. But that's the surprising thing about it, you know. I, I walked into a dive shop. He saw my shirt that says Atlantis, and he stopped, and he said, you are the best value in scuba diving. And I asked him why. 
And he says, well, how many airlines do go to the Philippines? I can go to the Philippines for the same price as I can go to Casimel or other places in the Caribbean. It's just a lot of flight, yes. But when I get there, the price of everything is comparable to going to the Caribbean too. But yet, instead of 10 species of butterfly fish, I see 110. For the th 35 species of pearl, less, you could take me to Apple Island and I see 440 species of pearl. I'm getting wonderful food made from scratch and their value is unbelievable. So we, we, we think we, we think that one guy in Canada who told me that you're the best value in scuba diving, I think he's right. And that's why I joined the organization. I'm really proud of Atlantis. I, I encourage people to give this a try. You won't regret it. Is there a general best time of year to visit? <clears throat> Uh, honestly, no. I asked that question when I was being trained, and I was told it's always a good time. Now, I've been there in January, February, March, April, October, November, and December, and I've come to the conclusion that that was true. Uh, the cast of characters change a little bit. Uh, there is a rainy season, uh, which is the summertime, June, July, and August. But then again, Honestly, it's kind of like Hawaii, I've been told, where it rains for 20 minutes, um, maybe mostly at night, sometimes during the day, and a rainbow comes down. never stops you from doing anything. It's not like a monsoon. Uh, the typhoon season in the Philippines is September 1st through the end of the year. Uh, the closer you get to the equator, the less apt you are to have to deal with typhoons. And I always look at the Caribbean myself. I love going and leading groups to Cozumel in October, which is part of the typhoon season, but I liked it. I guess as divers, we always kind of roll the dice a little bit because we like going to tropical locations, and sometimes storms happen in tropical lo lo locations. That's why I'm sure you guys always advise people to have trip insurance. So uh, thank you for answering all those questions. And if you do have any more specific questions, feel free to um, jot us an email at diving at .com, And we'd be happy to uh, provide you answers as well as pricing because it's like all over the place. Um, I also want to say the liveaboard is very well combinable with the resort. So you can make it a longer than a seven or nine night trip, depending on the time of year that you're going and the time that you have for your vacation. So I do want to get to the last part of our trip because there's two benefits for you having been on this uh, presentation tonight. One is every person who's been on this presentation who is booking a trip by the end of May will get a 500 US dollar resort credit. And this means a trip that you will take or it's valid for trips you take until the end of 2022. So that is something that is going to be available to all of you. So thank you, Atlantis and Les. And mm -hmm. the grand prize, so to speak, will be a thousand dollars off on a dive package. Um, that's for one person. And so the way we do this, we have a list of everybody who registered. And then we will run a random number generator. So we have from number one to number 124. So I'm going to get to this random number generator. So one to 124. And you need to be here, obviously, in order to win this. Number 55 would be Miranda Manning. Yeah, she is. All right. <laughs> Miranda, we will contact you and uh, congratulations. Uh, that's a pretty big savings. Obviously, the Philippines is a destination that you need to go to more than once with all the different areas. And um, like Les said, it's a really good value destination. I do want to just let you guys know where we're going to be next. 
In two weeks, we are going to go to Raja Ampat, Indonesia, which is another destination in the Coral Triangle. I know we've done Indonesia before, uh, North Sulawesi, which is a completely different area than Raja Ampat. So we invite you to join us in two weeks, Raja Ampat with Misul Eco Resort, a wonderful resort um, that has done great things in that area. Les, thank you very much and to Atlantis Resort for your time and the contribution. We love doing these things and traveling around the world from the comfort of our couches right now. Hopefully soon we can do it in person again. Thank you guys for joining us tonight and we will hopefully see you in two weeks. Thanks so much. Good night. Mm -hmm.